in five, hey, four, hey, three, hey, two, hey. What up, y'all? Over here's the thing. I'm Carol Stead. She's that chick ain't that chick. Welcome to another podcast episode. Smash that like button. Smash that notification button. Bangers, bangers, bangers. Brands, thank you, new episode. Thank y'all for allowing us the week off. Shout out to you, Patreon. Y'all said take the week off. Y'all didn't mind us posting a bonus as a main. And I I don't know about you and uh, Josh, Angel, mm -hmm. but I slept a good sleep. Did mm -hmm. you? I didn't go on Patreon live. Really? Mm -hmm. I just post. I didn't go. And I, I was like, <laughs> what if they leave? What if they leave? <laughs> and they say Kev is fine. We'll watch old episodes. I went to WrestleMania with my family. I slept was good. Was yes, good Melissa, vacation. when she books flights, she does not book them like I do. Oh, really? Mm -mm. She, we be leaving at 1030. Oh, yeah. So I got to sleep like, in. Let me oh, not wow. be out here before the workers. She's like, we don't have them. And plus, when they're with me, there's nothing to rush back home to. Yes. Because my family's there, so there's no rush to come back home. Mon so, Monty. Uh, Monty, he'd be okay. Okay. He, he is that one, I'm, I'm fine. He'd be loved. So uh, real quick, church announcements. Uh, Kevin on stage and friends, May 3rd. That is my birthday show. If you never came before, I would appreciate you uh, buying this. I put this video on the Patreon, but I'll, uh, I'll tell you as well. Um, Kevin on stage and friends, like Keep Your Distance, is produced by me, but it's not really for me. It's for the betterment of the black comedian experience for the whole of the community. Uh, Mel Mitchell, shout out to her. She sold out twice. Two, two shows. Yes, two shows at the Atlanta Comedy Theater. I bought some tickets for the Patreon, gave them away, created a whole hullabaloo. Won't be doing it that way again. Oh, no. Why? She, because they thought I was a scammer. Because there was so many tickets with my name on it in different seats. And people were coming in saying, I got tickets, I got tickets. And I just could have did it a different way. Oh, okay. Could have put the people, I could have bought the tickets and then been like, Angel had, plus one. Had them assigned, yeah. But they all had my name on them. Okay. But anyway. Uh, she sold out two shows and I was congratulating her. She was like, thanks, thanks to you and keep your distance. I was able to do that. And I was like, I, what? And she was like, nah, because you put me on the map and then, and I'd be like, I don't know about that, but people do say that often. Mm -hmm. And that's what Kevin on stage and friends is for. It's to introduce you to other comedians. Um, and so when they come to your city, you can go see them. So I appreciate y'all, uh, for supporting them. Patreon, uh, email list, people who bought tickets, y'all be making it possible to be able to put these shows on. Uh, so thank y'all. Angel, what you got? Um, So there will be new Here's the Thing merch dropping, I do believe, hopefully this week. Be on the lookout. Oh. It will be pre-order only. Okay? We're giving uh, Kevin a break because he has 50 million other pieces of merch that he's dropping. That are also coming out. That are also coming out. Are oh, y'all's is coming out? Oh, I thought it already came out. It came out. J&J? &J? Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. I was like, oh, God. I yeah. thought I was not stepping. So, anyway, so I'll be handling some of the Here's the Thing merch. Friend of the pod. <laughs> Friend I'm of the pod merch here coming I, soon. I forgot to bring the shirt here today, though, for y'all to see. But there will be different designs. You'll be able to get your size. See? Huh? So, don't be complaining. You'll be able, if you're a little tiny, tiny girl, if you're a big, 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 big fella, we're going to have your size. So, um, that, and then I'm coming out with some merch here soon uh, with... Uh, what is it? Life's journey. So yeah, that's what we're doing. And Angel has new braids. Period. Angel has vacation braids. Vacation I, braids are in. Are oh, you on vacation? Or this is just protective style. This is just protective style. Now that I'm off tour, I, not only do I have new braids, I have new sorors. Congratulations yeah. to the Congrats. new sorors of Delta Sigma Theta Sorority Incorporated, including Dr. Alicia Cheek. Alicia Cheek, this is beyond me. For, meat burger owes me nothing. Hey. So yeah. Mm -hmm. That's it. Impossible burger owes me nothing. It was one of those two. Yeah. All right, uh, friend of the pod, mm -hmm. J. Cole disrupted the whole rap industry two times yes, in a calendar in three days. He three days. did. Josh's personal best friend from high school. That's not true. Yes. <laughs> I did not go Dreamville's to finest. Some high school yes. Day. So if you've been under a rock, uh huh. Uh, a couple weeks ago we covered this. Kendrick shot at J. Cole and Drake Primarily on a song Drake. Called, Primarily Drake. Cole caught a stray. Cole yes, caught a stray. I would agree with that. I would agree with Let's a song called, a uh, Metro Boomin' Future song called... Like that. Like that. You're like getting that. there. Mm -hmm. mm, bum! Nigga, yes. bum! He, yeah. did, he did that a couple of times. That was my favorite part. Nigga, bum! Call it just me. Bum, hilarious. So J. Cole uh, fired back with a song called Seven Minute Drill. The, see, fire is an aggressive word, Kev. Responded? He, he um, addressed. Yes, addressed, addressed it, addressed. addressed the concerns via rhyming words and music. He was like, you don't put out a lot of albums and they're sometimes meh. 
that was kind of how he addressed it. He was like, now a couple of them were, man. Now some of them were actually really good. And you was in your prime. And you were, but with uh, I think he said, uh, if I'm if I'm remembering correctly, on the address me of mm -hmm. the situation because we don't want to put Josh in a comfortable situation. He is big Dreamville, and we're fans of Dreamville, friends, friends of the pod, love Dreamville, done some work. I with love them. Simba. That's what J Cole looked like. Yeah, to me. he do. He he and then, I, I know he Josh. He got a song like, called Young Simba. Ah oh, man, J Cole, we got to address it, but it, the people got to. Yeah. So anyway, um. Seven Minute Drill, I believe, was the name of the song. Uh -huh. if I'm not mistaken. Seven minute and this drill, is which based is, on a yes. Please explain. Okay, to people what Seven Minute drill. drill is a writing drill that J Cole does in the sense of getting stuff going creatively. He makes a song in seven minutes, right? Writing. Oh, I love that. And um, the producers make the beat in seven minutes. I love all yeah, of that. That sounds the same fun. Thing. Yeah, that's cool. Uh, it also, it seems head very. Head. Difficult. That lets you know how good he and they be. That's too. how we're going to do the unruly cousins. Album. I was going to say that's I, the only way we're going to get no, it done. I, I think it, it just breaks through writer's block. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Because I think I would have asked, more writer's he asked block. Him give him a word. No, you wouldn't, Kevin. I would. Trust yourself. I don't know me. That's the start of the song. So, uh, <laughs> <laughs> and we're yeah, off. Yeah, six fifty nine. And we're off. <laughs> so basically, he said, "Good kid, Mad City was good." Mm -hmm. To pimp a butterfly, put niggas to sleep. Four or uh, damn was his prime, mm -hmm. which this uh, song maybe go back and listen to that. It's one of my favorite albums of Kendrick. Yes, and then his most recent was uh, Mr. Morale and the Big Steppers. Uh -huh. He said was tragic, tragic. Uh, right, it was tragic, but in a, such a good way to me. I loved it. One thousand percent. So obviously the internet was in like. Yeah. Up in arms. arms up. Oh my God. The battle's coming. Because J. Cole doesn't have a history of addressing things like that. He says I'm the greatest and I'm the best rapper, but he don't. If, if, and I don't listen to every song or every he album. He went after No Name. He did. Mm -hmm. He did, but they talked it out and they addressed it. She even mentioned that uh, she invited Cole to pull up to one of her charity events and he donated some bread. Yeah, no, no, I know they resolved out. it. I'm okay. saying he has addressed people. Yeah, who've via, called him out before. Who have, uh, like, yeah, via song before. Yeah. And then two nights ago? Uh, uh huh. On Sunday night? Right, Thursday night. Oh, oh really? No, 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 no. Thursday night is when the song dropped. Yeah. Sunday night was day two of Dreamville Fest when he, Where performed, he talked about it. Sunday night was. It. Did you go? This was the same no, day that I would. I. Oh, go Iowa, ahead. South Carolina game, wasn't it? Yeah. Mm, yeah. Night two of WrestleMania. Yeah, yeah, because they had the game early. Yes. Earlier in the day, men's was game, was game was yesterday. It was WrestleMania for me. The game, WrestleMania, when I got back from WrestleMania. Oh, your day was slam. It was J. Cole. Mm -hmm. So uh, he, he, he retracted it. Let me pull up. He was about thing. to perform Love Yours. Basic. We, we got him, Josh. He's like, I got it. I got it. Listen to J. Cole himself. I'm so proud of that project, except for one part. Three minutes. He's talking about my it's delete later. One part of that shit yeah. that make me feel like, man, that's the lamest shit I ever did in my fucking life, right? And I know this is not what a lot of people want to hear. I know I can hear my niggas up there right now, like, nah, nah, I don't do that. But I gotta keep it 100 with y'all, right? I damn near had a relapse, right? Because let's pause real quick. What did he mean by that? Was he addicted to stuff? No, he had no. a relapse. Relapse in, of personality. Of, of yes, a, yes. Of okay. his journey. Because he was setting up the song that he was about to perform, Love Yours, which basically was his most at peace moment and most like, he said, most in tune with God in terms of his uh, creativity. Got it. So yeah. he relapse stepped purpose. out. Yes, he grew. Yes. That song was like a, a bookmark of his growth and he felt like he backpedaled before that. He backslid. Yes, back to I heard some shit that happened two, two, three weeks ago, however long it was. Y'all heard that bazooka that was chopped on the motherfucking game, right? So all of this time of me moving on my own accord, for the first time I was tested. Why am I tested? Because I got the world and I got my niggas like, what you gonna do, Cole? <laughs> my niggas like, bit boy, I must have had a thousand missed calls. Oh my fucking God. Text flooded. I couldn't even answer my shit. Nigga, it's wartime. Boom, 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 right? Niggas want to see blood. And, and I was conflicted because... <laughs> it's so funny that he said that. Heart, I know. You know what I mean? And like, <laughs> I know how I feel about I that, my peers. These two niggas that i just been blessed to even stand beside in this game, let alone chase, chase their greatness, right? 
So I felt conflicted because I'm like, bro, I know I don't really feel no way. But the world want to see blood. I, I remember you was conflicted. That, the world want to see blood. <laughs> so I say all of that to say, in my spirit of trying to like get this music out, I ain't going to lie to y'all. I moved in a way that was, that I feel spiritually feel bad on me. Like, like I try to like jab my nigga back and I try to keep it friendly. But at the end of the day, when I listen to it and when it comes out and I see the talk, that shit don't sit right with my spirit. That shit make me feel, that shit disrupts my fucking peace. So what I want to say right here tonight is in the midst of me doing that and, and in that shit, trying to find a little angle and downplay this, this nigga's fucking uh, catalog and his greatness. I want to say right now tonight, how many people think Kendrick Lamar is one of the greatest <laughs> motherfuckers that ever touched a fucking microphone? Huh? Yeah, I wasn't expecting that. Trigger, y'all love Kendrick Lamar, correct? We do, Jay. We really do. They were like, actually, we were laughing a lot. As do I. So I just want to come up here and be like, publicly be like, bro, that was the lamest, like, goofiest shit. And it made, I say all that to say, it made me feel like 10 years ago when I was moving incorrectly. And I pray that God align me back up on my purpose and on my path. You know what I mean? I pray that my nigga really didn't feel no way. And if he did, my nigga, I got my chin out. Take your best shot. I'm gonna take that shit on the chin. Do what you do. do. You know what I mean? Like, do what you do. All good. Like, it's, it's love. And I pray that, you know, I pray that y'all are like, forgive a nigga for like the misstep and then, and then I can get back to my true path because I ain't gonna lie to y'all. Past two days felt terrible. Like, Aww. it let me know how good I've been sleeping for the ah! past two days. That's how you so sleep all of that to say, ah! I want to I wanna now perform the song that's a ah! <laughs> <laughs> getting back on the right path and getting in tune with God. And the name of the song is called Love Yours. I want to do that for you. All right. This hold sounds on. Hold like on. a hold man on. that has Joshy, been in therapy. Yes. You are a resident. And I, I'm not Kev, 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 this Kev, we're, this we're, sounds like a man who's been in therapy. We're just stepping all over J. Cole's growth that he's had. That's it, what I was going to ask you. What no, are your but thoughts? It's, it sounds like he's been using Talkspace. Angel, you've used Talkspace, right? I've used, let me tell you, I have been a personal user of online therapy for a good while. It is one of the things, it's a tool that I feel like, you know how uh, every like person who works on like houses or works with their hands, there's like a specific tool they would never leave their house with. That is how I feel about therapy. And Talkspace is a platform that allows you to do therapy online, anywhere, from uh, anytime. It's convenient in your schedule. But just tell our listeners about how amazing Talkspace is. Listen, guys. Uh, with Talkspace, you could sign up online and get personalized match with the provider that's right for you, typically within 48 hours. That's mighty fast if I've ever tried to look for a therapist, if I could say. Uh, it's incredibly convenient to have virtual sessions with your licensed therapist from the comfort of your home. Who wants to go anywhere nowadays? I don't. I don't. I definitely don't. Uh, there's no need to commute to appointments, miss time at work, or line up child care in order to attend sessions. I know that's got to be draining. It's the um, worst. Right. It's it's mental health care made easy. Um, as a listener of this podcast, you'll get an $80 off your first month with Talkspace when you go to Talkspace.com slash crew. Crew. And enter cr promo code SPACE80. SPACE80. Space 80. To match with a licensed therapist today. Go to Talkspace.com slash crew. Crew. And enter promo code SPACE80. To get eighty dollars off your first month and show support for the show, that's talkspace.com slash crew. Crew promo code space eighty. Space eighty. Now, Kev, what were I, you saying? I was trying to let you talk. And I was like, you're like, hush, Kev. I said, I'm trying to set you up. I was like, I'm, I'm trying to set him up. I'm trying to I'm, <laughs> I'm trying to let other people talk. As a resident Dreamville expert, I want to hear your thoughts first. Then Angel Stoss, then I'll give my thoughts. Um, as as a fan of of Cole. Whether or not I've been in the vicinity um, of the family for a minute, honestly, I didn't expect him to even respond. Right, um, the first knowing, time. Not that he couldn't get in the ring with with uh, with Kendrick. I just felt like he didn't really need to because that. I mean, that dis dis track, quote unquote, was primarily addressing the song that he was on with Drake, mm -hmm. but also it was more of a target to Drake. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Cole just happened to, but I could also see everybody hitting him being like, oh, this is your time to let that dog out. Mm -hmm. um, 
I understand where Cole's coming from. I don't necessarily think he needed to. I felt like even in the diss track, you heard it in his tone. It was very relaxed. It was it wasn't aggressive like Kendrick's was. Yes. You almost heard it like I feel like I'm just addressing the situation. He says these are jabs. Yeah. Um, they felt like jabs. Yeah, but I like even how he referenced like I don't feel. I mean, to go after the man's discography didn't even sit right because he knows Kendrick's had a crazy run mm-hmm. with maybe a couple less albums that Cole's put out, but nonetheless, like the the albums are amazing in yes. in their own regard, mm-hmm. regardless of the number. Yeah. Um. I don't want to say it was expected, but like I could see, I I understand even Cole saying, I don't want to be back to that mentality of like, oh, let me just attack my peers just for the sake of rap culture. Um, As a rap fan, of course, I wanted to finally see like somebody go toe to toe with Cole. And, and of course, there's nobody else that could do it except for Kendrick. But at the same time, like we don't even know the full context and knowing Cole, like they'd probably already talked on the phone like this is our there was never any beef real beef to begin no. with people putting the title of beef around it we have no other words we have no other words for like oh yeah beef in the sense of like nas jay-z where we don't really like you beef or ice uh ice cube no vaseline beef yeah there's no other category for like i just want to see who's better like in sports if it's Kobe versus LeBron, you get to see them play. Yeah. In boxing, you you know what I'm saying? So yeah, you can yeah. like settle it. In rap, a lot of times it's either like who has the best. There, there's a lot of different ways to say who has the best. Uh-huh. Obviously, bars and lyrics and sales and tours and who outshines who on features, which J. Cole often does. Uh-huh. But beef is like as close to mano y mano as you can get. I release mine, you release yours, we can listen. And decide. Let, like the pe- but let the people decide. Let the people more than decide. Anything. And I think that's one thing that uh, really went against Cole was what we, what was he was trying to like grow away from because when he dropped uh, Forest Hills Drive, that was one of the pieces that everybody said, at least uh, industry folks, said it wasn't going to work because it was too much like self reflection type rap. It yes. was too much of his personality, his growth, his journey through Hollywood back to. Um, the Love Yours record where he literally just talks about appreciating what you have, right? Forest Hills Drive is the one that went double platinum, no features, right? Yes, that was We're sitting the, on the house. That was the big staple. Yes, the rendition of of, of that photo. But um, so for him, and, and he got to that point because he felt like he was trying to fit the people's mold of what a rapper should be in yes. the industry. Yes. And I think that's the back pedal that he was talking about. He's like, I slipped back into that peer pressure of Trying uh-huh. to fit peer pressure, a, Kendrick song. There he goes. Pressure, uh, <laughs> pressure. Uh, trying to apply that or falling into that and trying to fit that mold of what a rapper should be in these situations. One thousand percent. I think you surmised that. Yeah, very fantastic good. job. This is my take on it. This is a man that's headed into his big fours. Okay, he's we're tired. Oh yeah, he okay. got he got kids. Yeah. He's joining us. He's joining us. That's what that <laughs> sounded like. A man going to his big fours. You know what? Hey, hey. Never mind. Never mind. I I only did it because my friends was like, hey, you got to do something. I really didn't want to do it, y'all. Yeah. I did not want to have to do it. The problem is, is that, especially now, toxicity is probably an easier way to get attention than just talent. 100%. I would say back in the day when people had beefs, it, they were for real, for real. Legitimately, if I see you, I'm going to see you. On site. Versus it being a marketing play. Like, yeah. that's all we see. That's all I've been seeing here lately as far as in, in hip-hop on the real, even with inside the female rap genre, it's just been beefs and people being disgrunt- the disgruntled. The City Quarrels! I, which hurt my heart because Listen. I love the City Quarrels. Glow versus JT! I love Gloria Hallelujah. I love um, Meg Thee Stallion. I even love Nicki Minaj. But a lot of the attention they're getting is not a lot of times on their ability it's on who they pissed off with. Mm-hmm. And while I'm not saying that is what um, necessarily Kendrick, I think Kendrick has some stuff to get off his chest. Yeah. Definitely. But I think J. Cole, and while I know people are like, ah, because I feel like rap battles are a lot of men's reality TV. Oh, yeah. Like, <laughs> that's, and they no, like. That's, and J. Cole canceled season two. Right. They were like, <laughs> this was season three of The Real Housewives. <laughs> 
of Atlanta when uh, Sh- Sheree pulled Kim's wig on the side of the road and y'all want to cancel the show? You robbed us of this before we had a chance to get the reunion episode. <laughs> yes, we wanted her to know. And, and Kendrick was like, sorry, this this uh, season has been. Oh, sorry. J. Cole was like, sorry, the season has been canceled. But y'all forget. We still have Drake. If he wants to come into the ring with mm-hmm. K Dot, we might have a real. I think he'll do something. I, ho- I think he has to. I hope so because I do think there is some when it's there is some fun in hearing how people will do jabs over their music. But I can understand why J Cole will be like, "Wait a minute, how I get in this? I actually don't want to be in this." Listen, I can I talk? Yeah, it's I don't, don't want to step I think on I gotta move. You want to go? Go no, ahead. No, no, no. I'm going to wait until time? it like says you must. That's coming out right now? Yes, yeah, so I'm just going to I'm going to say this, and uh, we, we was talking in the group chat about this for a good amount of time. Mm-hmm. One of our group chat members who remained nameless was one of the oh, men. Oh, I him out. It was, I'm just kidding. <laughs> oh, I <laughs> love a good out. You see no, toxicity. No, it, it, I was like, actually, he put it on Instagram, so you're not no, even it, hiding no, it. I know, but I, it was I B-Lou, B-Lou. Okay, B-Lou was, uh, he, was uh-huh. represent, he put this on Instagram, so we're not, he didn't delete it. Uh, he was representative of a lot of the hip hop pure fans. Oh, he hated who them. were like, oh, oh yeah. my! And he's a J Cole fan. Oh. He uh, Tony was like, you called him your favorite rapper, and he was on the like, say it with your chest, stand Squ- on it, squabble, don't squabble, duck, don't make Kendrick respond, make Drake respond. I want to see it as a fan of hip hop. This is a part of hip hop that feels like it was more prevalent in the nineties. Oh, absolutely. But, but it hasn't been like. It's not as prevalent as it used to be. It still no. happens, but when I was coming up, and not only did it happen, it often ended in violence. And I guess it still real, does real, in certain cities. Beat. It yeah. still ends in violence. But I mean, like, Biggie Tupac, I remember living in North Carolina. I'd be like, this East Coast, West Coast people, are they going to get regular people? Like, I used to, because I was really young. <laughs> I was course. like 13. Like, I was like, come shoot me if I like one of <laughs> that's them. That's what I was like. I don't like the West Coast rap. I do a little bit, but I'm like, <laughs> so the part of it who was like, I don't think anybody thought Kendrick and J. Cole or Drake would ever end in like actual physical violence. Oh, I think we absolutely all, not. But that's not always the case with some rap beef. Yeah, especially back in the day, back niggas in the day. really got shot for real yeah, 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 yeah. over these lyrics, right? So that's one thing. Um, I want to take this quick aside to say Kendrick Lamar's albums, I love them. I love them all for different reasons. And what he love, what I love about his music is that his music, his albums to me, are a time capsule mm, of a I story in time. Good Kid, Mad City is a is for me. I wish John Singleton was alive to turn that into a movie mm-hmm. because I'm with Kendrick in the like I'm a, I'm affiliated, but I'm not in a gang. But I keep getting I, I keep having all the residual effects of being in a gang. Yes. But I don't want to go all the way there. Mm-hmm. To Pimp a Butterfly was as close to a jazz hip hop fusion album that was had a lot of dark themes which jazz and it was like reckless like jazz yes it was that's like uh uh terrace martin as yeah the, as the like some jazz is beautiful syncopation and some jazz is like it's cymbal crashes it's mm-hmm. very like uh aggressive yes. right but a quick aside nichols was trying to downplay that album like he didn't have actual like certified bangers uh if i'm not mistaken King Kutz is on there was uh huh King Kunta. King Kunta, all be right. all right. Yeah, Isn't all Humble right is. on there? No, Humble's, no, Humble's on, on Damn. Damn. Humble's on Damn. That, no, he, he had some hits on there. Yeah, though. but I'm like, uh, but I get it, right? But I, I don't mind. People always say you can't listen to an album in a party or scares away the hoes. It's not good rap. I think certain rappers make certain type of music. Like, I don't, I don't consume music. I don't go to parties a lot. Yeah. So, like, Future's not my favorite rapper. His music's not my favorite. Mm-hmm. But when we were at all deaf parties and they played Future, it fit perfectly. Right. Right? Dirty um, soda in the styrofoam. I don't do drugs, but that night I had a double cup of pineapple and rum in there and you I said, felt like it was lean. Yeah. So I get that. But that to me, it's not the only way to qualify rap as good. I know. I love Kendrick not because I'm like, let me uh, let me twerk to his music at all. Okay? There's plenty of people who give you that. <laughs> that. Waka flocka. But I love Kendrick because I do feel like he is an artist artist. Yes. Like, I love his choices and I can tell he's making choices from an intrinsic 
pool versus yes. an outside pool. Yes. The, this is a whole nother side point, and I'm shut up so you can continue. What really blessed me during this whole thing is that my son Marcus was following the whole. Oh, the Marcus? Listen, when me and Marcus, me and my husband Marcus Tank, were trying to, I, I was watching the apology to make sure I was ready for today, mm -hmm. last night or the night before last. And um, I was like, little Marcus, you know about this? He was like, oh, I might, de I might delete later. Mm -hmm. I said, I said, you know, I said, and you, so do you, you heard the original thing that he was responding to. He was like, like that? What, yeah. I said, he said like that? Like that. I said, <laughs> wait a minute, because Kendrick Lamar is his favorite rapper. Yeah. I said, wait, so you knew all this? He was like, yes. I was like, oh my God. Oh my God. <laughs> I, I was afraid having you in this private school that you were just going to be <laughs> so removed from the I culture, but you're right in there and you were listening to it in Paris. Yes. What a flex, but yes. go ahead. Uh, damn is one is is my second favorite to Good Kid, Mad City, and Mr. Mount Mr. Morale and the Big Steppers is a great album. It is very heavy to me. It is like the album, album version of Fruit Valley Station, the movie, mm. and therefore I don't choose to listen to it There's because it is on there so too, great music. Yeah, I can't. A lot of it's, it's Rosewood. It's so heavy. I'd be like, I don't want to be this way. That's yeah. my cruising music. I love it. Really? The, the one where he and, and the girl are cussing at each other during the rap, and she's mm -hmm. like, fuck you, nigga. He's like, fuck. I, that's, that's Jody August and, uh, Wilson. and, uh, oh, hilarious. It is. Taraji P. Henson and, and Tyrese and, and Baby, Baby Boy. Boy. I choose me. I'm sorry. There is just, and then you hear the tappers in there. It is heaven for me. Mm -hmm. But go ahead. Go ahead. Sorry. But I get it. Like, that's how he makes his albums. And J. Cole makes his albums his way. And Dr and Drake makes um he makes Instagram captions, songs of the summer type albums. That's why uh -huh. I believe you have different artists. Yeah. Because when you want to listen to some really reflective stuff, you can listen to that. When you want to party, you can listen to future. When you want some just good vibes, you listen to Drake if that's your thing. Uh -huh. Now, as a man in my 40s who values my peace and my sleep. I have never connected to a rapper more <laughs> deciding y'all got it. Oh, that's big. You, I, I, J Cole might as well. And also he's talking to his people at Dreamville Fest, which is essentially like me talking to the stage crew and right. Patreon, Patreon or, or stage crew fans. Yeah. Like I'm talking to y'all. Y'all are my core fan base. I feel like, cause you, uh, the thing that I felt like him talking to his, his people more was, I hope y'all, uh, forgive me for the misstep. Of uh, personality or something he said, yeah, something like that. That's a family meeting. That's a family meeting. Mm -hmm. He's not talking to rap fans overall. And as a man, it was actually, to me, more impressive to say, first of all, I was peer pressured. That's not really me. I apologize. I don't even, that's not really how I get down. Mm -hmm. I'm moving on and take your best shot. Like, I'm not preventing you from coming back, do your thing, but. I need my sleep good. Yeah. And I never, as a person, never want to be in a position where I'm making people happy at my own personal expense of how I feel. Correct. He said, I've been sleeping good for 10 years and two nights of sleep were messed up. Hey, yeah. hello, everyone. Let, let alone cutting down somebody else at the expense, too. I, I'm, I, I tripped. I usually don't respond. I put my glasses on. Kendrick, listen, brother, 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 brother. We mm -hmm. got to come together as a community. And I don't care if, if you could love. I want old hip hop. That's not real hip hop. Guess what? I bet you J. Cole slept like a baby that night. Yeah. And I, ne I never want to be in a position where I'm making strangers who are not my core fan base happy going, you know, giving you the entertainment you want at the expense of my own mental health. And this is what I love about rap. We was talking about this in the Ball Brothers chat. Beefs are reflective of the time period that they're released. 100%. In the 90s, it was almost kill or be killed. Mm. Bars wise, they was going way above the line. And a couple of them did. For and real, for Some real. people really did. Drake versus Meek Mill was the first time uh, Drake's music video and how he used to do, he did Charged Up and then Meek Mill came back and then he did um, Back to Back. Drake used a lot of memes. And Meek Mill was not only. Uh, hit in the song he was hit on social media yeah. and then at drake shows and that was reflective of oh social media is a part of rap now as well and then um even pusha t took a piece of that because he took new information he put the drake the drake blackface thing out so it was partial means partial 90s hip-hop cut your head off oh, and then gosh. j cole is 
black men are in therapy uh -huh. and we're deciding peace over yeah. over whatever and i'm i'm withdrawing from this style of rap making mm -hmm. i'm deciding for my overall and i think all of those are reflective of hip-hop but it, it, it there's a scene in the wire when uh cuddy who was in prison for a long time he comes back to avon's crew and they try to put him on the street again he's supposed to kill people and he he doesn't take a shot and he eventually goes back to avon and he's like the game ain't in me no more and 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 avon's like all right we'll, we'll, we still use you for your mind he's like no you're not hearing me whatever it is that makes you do what you do how you move how you flow how you flow it ain't in me, none of it. And you know what he did? Retired from gangs and went and helped the at-risk inner city <laughs> youth with a boxing gym. J. Cole is Cuddy. And then uh, Slim Charles was like, he was a man in his day. And Avon was like, he a man today. And I think you are as much of a man if you decide to go in 10 toes down or if you decide, I'm not doing this I, I, to me, to I, me, Kevin. I, think I respect you, you either way. I think when you experience life, Without the turmoil, it's hard to just willing, willingly go back. Yeah. When you realize, oh, this is what it feels like when I don't have people on my back, when I don't feel like I'm having to yeah. fight my way out of the corner, it's hard to just sometimes willingly go back to those feelings in that <laughs> life. It's just, it truly is. When you've experienced peace, for real peace, mm -hmm. it is hard to make the conscious decision to let that go for sure so i wow yes did it not do anything for our entertainment and the, did it take away some of probably the the zest and everything else that we were hoping to get from this rap beef <laughs> the zestiness yeah um yeah but i can understand like once you didn't felt something that feels so good like being unbothered and being happy and being in your purpose to let something like a song from someone that you actually respect pull you out of it, it yeah, it's just like, why am I doing I this? Get it. And, uh, and somebody in the Patreon said this, and I didn't catch the name. It's the same thing B. Lou said. He said, nah, he was calling himself the greatest. You can't be the greatest if you do this. And here's where I, um, I asked Tony and the group, and I asked people, do you have to be, in order to be the greatest, you have to battle people. And most people, everybody in the chat was like, you don't have to, because battle rappers battle every day, but they're not often considered the best rappers alive. It's usually reserved for uh, rappers who release, you know, commercial music. Uh -huh. um, or, you know what I'm saying? Like, people ain't like, oh, the greatest alive, the greatest rapper, period. They don't, they don't often uh, single out a, a battle rapper. Now, if you're a J. Cole fan, or you're a fan of pure hip hop, and you're like, he, he can't call himself the greatest, um, fine, but Tony was like, and Tony had an interesting point of view. He said, listen, to me, he still can because the way he raps, how he outshines people on features, those are other qualities that I respect. This is Tony Baker speaking, not me. Uh -huh. uh, but to me, the greatest is Jay Moss anyway because he was doing gospel rap that felt cool. How many rings LeBron got? Four. Four rings. People would call him the greatest, but there are people who have more rings. Yes, mm. and people who call Jordan the greatest because he has six rings and he's undefeated in the finals they don't often call Bill Russell the greatest who has 11 rings and exactly. Robert Ory has seven rings. And I think people there, they kind of like, if you could compare to something is to like boxing with boxing, you cannot call yourself the greatest mm -hmm. if you have never had the championship belt. And if you don't have it at the current time, yes. Or if you didn't fight all the fighters, Correct. the other thing about it is hip hop rap music is art is subjective. Yeah. Uh, to some people, he, Nothing has changed about him. To some people, he's disappointed them. But the thing I like most, and we can move on, he don't care. That's the about beauty. The people of who are disappointed. <laughs> he, and I that's the thing I took from it most. Y'all feel how y'all because people will let you destroy your own life in peace for their own oh, entertainment, entertainment and don't care. And they'll go back to work, go pick up their kids from school, have a drink. Go for a run and 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 have enjoyed your turmoil. And as a person of high visibility, I don't ever want to let people enjoy my beef drama and I'm feeding into it for your entertainment at my own demise. Yeah. Won't do it. Can't right. have it. Won't listen, coach it. Listen. I got to go to bed. I got to sleep good. Listen, and if Kendrick and Drake do go back at it, I feel like Kendrick would have one more verse. Yeah. Then Drake might in the pocket. At least that's will be my pick on Prize Picks. Th Prize Picks oh, is America's number one fantasy sports app with more than three million members. 
And it's the easiest and most exciting way to get in on the action while you watch your favorite sports and players. You just pick more or less on two or more player stats and watch the winnings roll on it. Roll on in. Get in on the playoff action and win up to 100 times your money on prize picks as you and the world's best players take the game to a new level during basketball's postseason, which is coming up, by the way. Uh, you can now win up to 100 times your money on prize picks with as little as four correct picks. You can turn $10 into 1000 with basketball, hockey, and college basketball entries today on prize picks america's number one fantasy sports app now i love using prize picks guys last year i won a little bit of money guys i don't know if you know this um mm-hmm. I I, know. and and i won enough to pay for a little night at the west and a little yeah, staycation I knew Man, about it, was, it. it was a great time you know a little disneyland uh, staycation got to uh wine and dine at the at the mighty weston courtesy of uh, mighty weston the and mighty that, weston and uh, that prize picks yeah that prize picks money came in good and on time too you could withdraw it right there um, I enjoyed it. I love doing uh, PRAs on basketball. That's points, rebounds, and assists. Because for me, I feel like I get a little bit more of a chance to uh, get to the number that I'm going for. Uh, so those are the ones that I'll pick normally. Um, download the app today and use code SK for a first deposit match up to $100. Download the app today and use code SK, SK. for a deposit match up to $100. Um, while we're here, let's go ahead and talk about one skin. One skin. Oh, yes, yeah. Listen, yes. there's nothing like feeling or being confident in your own skin. That's why I have to tell you about today's sponsor, which is one skin. Let me tell you, that thing is so luxurious. Go ahead, Angel. I absolutely love it. It be having my skin looking like pew, 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 pew. <laughs> Because <laughs> if you're going to be looking at me, I got to make sure I look good. Um, and what I, I <laughs> why are you laughing at me, Kevin? I absolutely love it. I love the fact that I'm busy, so I don't need 50 million steps, okay, for my face. I need a good old one step, slap it on, all right? And I want to look young for as long as possible, okay? Because we have aging cells on our face that cause lines, wrinkles, and thinning skin. And I'm not here for it, okay? Because mm, Angel neither, is trying Angel. to be over here with the o- o- OS, excuse me, OS01 peptide. Mm-hmm. Okay, help me look younger. Help me look gorgeous. And I think you'll love it, too. Go ahead and tell them about the rest of it, Josh. Oh, um, yeah. So they combine tissue engineering, data analysis, and cutting-edge longevity science, I believe in science, to create the <laughs> world's most effective product to target skin aging. One Skin believes the purpose of skin care is not just to improve how we look, but to optimize our skin biology so that is more resilient to the aging process. They create next-level skincare. So what we need you guys to do, One Skin is the world's first skin longevity company by focusing on cellular aspects of aging. Mm -hmm. One Skin keeps your skin looking and acting younger for longer. Get started today with 15% off using code SK SK. at oneskin.co. That's 15% off oneskin.co with code SK SK. after you purchase they'll ask you where you heard about them please support here's the thing and let them know who sent you (laughs) who sent you we did Uh uh that's us Uh 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 15% off so who we talking about next um, you want me just to throw us in there? Let's go ahead and talk about women's basketball because I've been waiting. Uh, you know, I am the resident. You tell me what what you thought of the Final Four, Angel. You know what? Before we get to before we get to the Final Four, I got to talk about my namesake, Angel Reese. Big shouts to Angel Reese. Okay, this friend is her last year. Friend of the pod. La- friend of the pod. Mm-hmm. Friend of the pod. This is her <laughs> last year playing collegiate. She going into the draft. She, de- she declared. She declared. Um, sh- they didn't make it into the final four. They lost to Iowa. Mm-hmm. And you know, race I- war two. Uh huh. Uh huh. Now, mind you, last year did they beat Iowa? Yes, they did because she was the champion. 2023. Sure did. Come on, listen. I you don't have to question me. I'm the resident. You are the sports <laughs> expert. And I think people, uh, unfortunately, forget that once this black girl won a championship, people were at her throat. Mm-hmm. People talked anything she did that seemed cocky, that seemed too like boisterous, that seemed not angelic. Like everybody has something to say. If she was like, she did this to the girl's mm-hmm. face, all this stuff. So Angel was like, if y'all want me to be the villain, guess what? I will be the villain. Yeah. 
and I'm going to keep talking my shit just like any other dude who plays uh plays the game. You know, they also would talk shit. So now after she's lost, which of course anybody who really loves the game that they play and they're this close to tasting victory one more time, especially because she already know people don't like her. Um, when you lose to a worthy opponent, you might get a little emotional. Yeah. But people are all like, no, you're the villain. You can't cry. You can't do this. You can't do that. I don't think people realize that as a black woman, okay, because I don't I never heard this type of vitriol towards Caitlin Clark. Never. And it's not like Caitlin Clark plays like the most meek player ever. Like, no. let me just shoot. I made it. No, Thank she does the same thing Angel does. Yes, she talks a lot of shit. And she has every right to. She is a great effing player. She is. But when a black woman do it, it's your trash, you're all this. First of all, I would love to see somebody play in lashes and a lace front. And ball. And, and ball the way she balls. 20 and 10. If you've never worn a lace front, you don't know how distracting it is. <laughs> and to sweat in lashes and they stay on? Yeah. So my hat's off to Angel. I'm so glad that the Lord, the only athletic ability that God gave me was twerking. Because if I could play even an ounce <sighs> as good as Angel, everybody could. I would be telling people to suck my thing every game. These balls in your mouth, these nuts. They would be like, Angel Moore these is... These nuts. <laughs> she is just at all. Oh. I'd be like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'm not going anywhere after college. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to talk shit. I'm going to talk shit. So anyways, um, but also, it's also nice to see people who are not really truthful about their racism be so mad when I am lost. In a good old black woman. Oh. She took the journey. She took the journey. It was a long journey. She's been there, what, 15 years? Don? Yeah. Or, no, that's not been that long. It's been there for, she's been there she's looking been for up. a minute. She was at Temple for, for a minute, too. She's been it's there for less, a long time. It's been like less than 10 years. Has it been less than 10? Yeah. She's been there for a bunch of seasons. Uh, let me check, though, because I don't know off the top of my head. I know it hasn't been 15. Well, she. 2008. They, oh, 2008? I wish people would quit questioning. I don't know why you challenge my Angel. Angel sports, on sports? My why would sports I question Angel on sports? I don't know why. <laughs> she had a very good chance of winning the year that we had the pandemic. They had a fantastic yeah. record. They only had one loss. But then guess what? They didn't have no dang on tournament. But let me tell you, that woman, she said, just hold on. Hold on for a little bit. And I'm going to whoop y'all's ass. And what did she do? Listen. That baby whooped their ass. Oh. First of all, let me say this. Women's college basketball. Uh -huh. I'd say over the for me, Kevin, over the last three years, has been head and shoulders mm -hmm. above men's as far as entertainment. They play a better technical game too, to be honest. But even outside of that, no, and women have always been more fundamentally sound yeah. than men. They just men dunk, uh -huh. and they'd be like, "But he dunked it, yeah, and I lock it." But women, this the last three years, and I think part of it's because the one and done of men's college basketball and the uh, introduction of like you can go overseas for a year or you can play in like overtime. Yeah. The greatest players don't go to college often and if they do, they don't stay for three years. Yeah. It's never been like that, uh -huh. but it's like even less like that. But what women have had over the last three years yeah. is heroes Come and on. villains, yeah. stories to follow, and the greatest have been playing each other. Yeah. Right? That's what you need in sports. Like, the NBA was struggling until Bird versus Magic. Matter of fact, the, the, when Magic and Bird played in college, Indiana State and Michigan State, it was the precursor to race war one. It was the original race war because mm -hmm. Larry Bird was Indiana white boy, purebred Hooper. Yep. And magic was black, flashy Michigan state mm -hmm. and magic beat bird in the title. And mm -hmm. it was like a huge thing. And then yep. they both went into the NBA, one to the Lakers and the Celtics. Larry went right on to racist Boston. Yeah. He and was magic like, went right. to Los Angeles. I mean, you couldn't write a better script. Yeah. 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 And the NBA was born off of, Lakers versus Celtics. And then Michael Jordan was the first person who was like, now it's just him. He was yeah. Kendrick. It's just me. Mm -hmm. And then he carried the league into the next, like the, the magic versus bird was the Lakers versus Celtics. Mm -hmm. When Jordan came in, it was 
I want to see Michael Jordan play. Yeah. Jordan's Bulls versus whoever's team. Yeah. So sports has always needed that. We also have the evolution of the women's game. For many years, it was like Tennessee with, with Pat Summit, Shamiko Holesclaw. They it was either them winning, Gino at UConn was winning, and they were dominating, mm -hmm. right? Or you had Stanford might win one or Notre Dame. It was like, but it was usually UConn or Tennessee for a long time. And then what happened? Women, there's so many great players. Gino couldn't get them all. So now you had Baylor was good, Notre Dame was good, Stanford was good, South Carolina's good. Now you have some rivalries and, and nothing better in America than race. Mm -hmm. Caitlin Clark is a bona fide, pure bred hooper. Yeah. But she's also a white woman. Yeah, come on. And you know they're going to protect that. And they, she's the great white hype. Yeah. CNN, when they posted that South Carolina won the game, the, it was a picture of Iowa. On the article, it was they defeated Caitlin Clark in Iowa. I said, now y'all done took the winners of the game mm -hmm. and put the loser's picture up. And so, I mean, Caitlin, Caitlin's team that lost two years in a row. Yeah. Their championship and time. the thing about Caitlin, you, you, you have it perfect. She does everything. When uh, last season, Raven Johnson, who balled her up, deed her up this season, uh -huh. she, I got some more No, beer. that was me. My face is itching. Okay. Raven wasn't a great shooter. Right. So Caitlin Clark waved her off from the three point line and it was like, oh, 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 she talks trash. She does all that stuff. Rape, uh, Angel did that to Caitlin. She, she doesn't respect the game, blah, 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 yeah. blah, 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 blah. So I think and Caitlin, but when I was watching the games, that girl, not only was she getting every call, she was getting push offs. Off yeah. Like it oh, was yeah. like. You couldn't foul her, but she could foul you. And it was then, like, there, and I don't, I'm not big on like the refs control the game, right. but she seemed to be ref yeah. very differently than anybody was, else on the court. She of was course. mad she didn't get those calls in the last game. And, and guess what? That black girl she waved off, mm -hmm. she deed her up. They switched her arm to her. Caitlin had 18 points in the first quarter. Mm -hmm. uh, when Raven Johnson took over, she had eight points, three turnovers. And it was like, I'm taking the ball away from you personally. Yeah. Most steals in basketball are very rarely on ball defense still. So usually I pass, pass him to Josh yeah, and yeah. you steal it. She ripped her. She said, give me that shit. Ripped her <laughs> at the end of the half, ripped her, ripped her at the end of the second, uh, fourth quarter, ripped her. Like I'm personally taking it. Yeah. Cause you waved me off and I ain't forgotten. And the girl never forgot. Now Haley Von Lith, like most people, she plays for LSU. She transferred now or put in the transfer portal. She was getting cooked by Caitlin. Mm -hmm. She, to the point where Kayla, Haley Van Liff was like, well, nigga, I don't know. What, what, what you want what me is, to do? What is going on? The girl going for 30, man. I, I can't stop her. This is what's crazy. Caitlyn, like you said, she's a baller regardless. She don't need nobody to protect her. She yeah. Meaning, she doesn't need the world to put a bubble around her yeah. as a white woman. <laughs> she can play regardless. But I do feel like there was a thing of having someone who could who who was great competition, Angel Reese, who yeah. also had a lot of personality. They felt like you can't you can't be uh, really confident in yourself. You can't be any of those. You things. hush. Shut up and dribble the ball or else I was looking at the comments under certain videos in the way people talk so bad about Angel Reese. Yes. I was like, that's wild. Yeah, and to she me. balled in the, even though LSU lost, she Personally, ball. Now, some she of the is a baller. Some of the things that some of the vitriol Caitlyn gets is because of how people talk about her, the media, and like casual Caitlin fans. Caitlyn or Angel? Caitlyn. Okay. A lot of it is like she's the greatest player ever, and it's like, first of all, you can't even say that mm -hmm. yet. Mm -hmm. She's absolutely phenomenal. She is great. But she hadn't even won a ring in college, not one. And that's what I. Okay. That's one thing you got to do, and also. Just because you wasn't watching when Maya Moore and Shamiko Holtzcall was playing or Brianna Stewart was playing or Sue Bird or Sabrina Ionescu. Don't, What's that like, Smith? What's that Smith? No, Reggie? Who's Reggie's sister? Cheryl Miller. Thank you, Miller. I said, Yeah, like, like, now, what I think is Caitlin plays very much like Steph Curry plays, especially when he was at Davidson. And I think the NBA is reflective of how she plays now. So I think a lot of men, this is just my hypothesis, somebody on Twitter put this very clearly, a lot of men can see how men play the game in how Caitlyn plays the game. Yeah. Because she's that. pulling up from the logo, same stuff Steph does, same stuff Dame does, Paul George. She stepped back three from way downtown. Like, 
most women don't haven't been playing like that while the NBA is also playing like that. Mm-hmm. Like Maya Moore was hooping. She was mid range. She could do everything well. She retired when the prison reform married a prisoner that or the man she was helping to get out of jail and retired early broke my heart because mm. she was absolute baller. So I don't think that's Caitlin's fault that people have, especially on the internet recency bias, just because you are new to the game and this is the best player you've seen. Yeah. Doesn't mean it's the best player ever, but Caitlin's also a benefit of social media. Women's yes. sports was not being covered like that. No. Because social media, the way she plays is undeniably talented. The same way Malaysia Fu Wiley, when she goes through the lane behind the back, underneath Jelly, that goes viral. Because mm-hmm. that's stuff that you see men do. And I'm really like, can't wait to see what she does in the WNBA. Because yeah. a lot of WNBA players are like, she ain't going to do that when she gets here. Diana Taurasi and Sue Bird have like a little... Um, Podcast? Watch along show. It's kind of oh, okay. like a podcast where they watch along to the game. Mm-hmm. And she was like, they ain't going to do that when they get here. And often what happens in WNBA, and I'm very curious if it happens to Caitlin, WNBA, because they don't have as many teams at the NBA, they the, everybody who's there is is legit. Yeah, they're and not playing games. They're not playing games. Uh, the defense is, is up there. Like, mm-hmm. imagine the NBA took 10 teams out. Everybody would be Everybody's good. Everybody's phenomenal. I went to an L.A. Sparks game many moons ago. This is when uh, Candace Parker was still playing. Mm-hmm. It was the most riveting thing ever. I love, because one, girls be playing hella aggressive. Yeah. Hella, hella. It, I don't, it's it's not that they don't have ego. They do, but it's also like, it's. I don't, I don't know. How, I'm trying to figure out how to phrase it. Because it's not showboating. It's almost like they are so out there to just like, Prove the point of I deserve to be here and we are deserve to be yeah. viewed as real athletes. So I am excited for this new uh, sh- this new shift that is going towards women's collegiate sports and hoping that it transitions over into the WNBA. Yeah, which I don't feel like gets much coverage it's, at all. It's not, but it's getting more. It's I going so. up. And here's the thing about Caitlin and Bearded Foodie just said this, and I agree. Two things can be true, which is never happens on the internet. She might not be the best player ever. But it's undoubtable she's an amazing how much, player. not only is she amazing, she's one of the best of her time. Yeah. And she's brought a lot of new eyeballs to the game. Yeah. Don Staley said that, like, that's undeniable. And that's what makes people be like, well, let's see what she does in the league. Because in the WNBA, there's a Raven on every team. Mm-hmm. And I watched that. I watched every possession of that game. Every possession Raven was on, Caitlin was flustered. Mm-hmm. The WNBA, they gonna be, they gonna be like, they gonna have something to prove, like when LeBron came in. Yeah. So, and when I, I've, I've been a LeBron fan since he was in high school, I'm curious to see how she adjusts because what's hard to defend is a step back three. If you pull up from the logo, no matter how good the defense is, a step back three from the logo is hard to defend. Correct. She ain't got to get in the paint. Just a screen. Pulling up from the logo is hard. And she going to get that shot. Mm-hmm. They she might she not be going for... I, people th- might think she's going to go and tear the W up from the jump. And, and I don't know if that's true. Mm-hmm. But I would like to see it. Yeah. And what, I, what I've never seen before, even in men's sports, I've seen the Phoenix Mercury... Their first one of their first games is against the Indiana, Indiana Fever. They were like Diana Taurasi versus Caitlin Clark. Caitlin Clark hasn't even been drafted yet. No. I have never seen men or women a team promoting a game for a player who's not even been drafted yet. <laughs> that's great, and that's what people say, and that's what it can be true. Yeah. She absolutely is a baller, but basketball is a team sport. Iowa did not have the team South Carolina had. Camila Cardosa six seven. Listen, they had six, no seven, six, Jesus seven and Christ almighty. Hannah Stokey was Iowa's tallest player. Six, three, Caitlin Clark, six, one, six, seven, six, three, six, seven with long arms. Very different. When Caitlin Clark missed, that was it. The possession was over. Mm-hmm. South Carolina could miss two or three times. Mm-hmm. They was rebound, rebound, yeah. rebound. When Caitlin was flustered, bad shot. Once you miss, it's over, baby. Yeah. We not get another chance at that shot. That's why basketball is a team game, which is yeah. why it's going to be hard. And part of the reason somebody else said that I thought it was interesting, part of the reason Caitlin be cooking so much is because that whole offense for Iowa flows through her. She's either shooting or assisting, yeah. but the whole offense flows through her. On a better team, there's more options, so you usually get less points. Correct. Or when you get to WNBA, because of the last best player from last year, this show you how bad Indiana was, Aaliyah Boston went number one last year, 
And Indiana still in the number one. They got the draft pick number one again this year. Oh. I mean, they not betting much good. Still betting much good. <laughs> they still not doing they still good. Not much and they good. got the number one draft pick last year and getting it again this two, year. And two in a row. They like, hopefully, if we twin, <laughs> where have you been? And maybe and they maybe. get one more year, then they might get the next place. <laughs> yes. Oh, but bless But before it. we move off this subject, Shout out to Don Staley. Man. Come on, somebody. Love, had a crush on since the WNBA was started. I watched the very first WNBA game. I watched when Don was playing with Lisa Leslie, Rebecca Lobo, all of them. When they was on Martin, she cooked Martin personally, talked trash. I remember when she went to Temple, and South Carolina was down like 20 to 9 in this game. Don didn't even call a timeout. She was just like, chill. We got this. Mm -hmm. And you know what, Josh? They, they had, did. They had height. They did. Oh, they they did. had, they had them rebounds good. on lock. Also, she lost all five starters last year, came back with five new starters, and went undefeated. They had everybody that came into the game was a problem. Mm -hmm. Malaysia Fu Wiley, who I just bought her jersey, she my new favorite player. This jersey will be reflective of my current women. <laughs> I'll hang Angel up in the rafters. She's not going nowhere. Right, but Malaysia right. came off the bench. This girl is a problem. Mm. Pow, pow, po, po. She was pulling from three. Cardosa is going, I think, number four in the draft. Um, Raven Johnson d up. It was great. And Dawn's a great coach, and I love black women excelling. She it's looked just... like somebody's auntie. I love Dawn? it. <laughs> oh, cool, she rich looked... auntie. Louis she Vuitton like Dawn. somebody's auntie. Cool. Tessa was hooping, who's another freshman. She was pulling. I was like, this is great. But it's now Iowa. I don't know if they're gonna be back next year. Oh, is Caitlin going to the draft or she? Caitlin going number one. Oh, and she the is. And the WNBA draft she... is like Monday. I think it's like the fifteenth. I didn't know if she was like if this was her last year or not. Yeah, she she was a so senior what... this year, but she had because of COVID, they could have gotten she could have got an additional season, season, but she's going to the league. She's so like, she, listen, so she can thing. double dip with uh, going to the draft and the Ice Cube League. I don't know about that because a lot confused. of women play multiple leagues, uh -huh. but I don't know how they. I don't know how the, the big three comes in. I don't think she's going to take that deal, but I, I would be happy she did. If y'all don't know, Ice Cube offered her $5 million to play in the big three. The big three is just a summer league. Um, and he was like, women shouldn't have to go overseas in the summer to play, to make ends meet. Mm -hmm. uh, he offered her $5 million. I went to some big three games. It's, a, it's pretty entertaining. Mm -hmm. uh, but I'd love to see play Caitlin Clark play against men. Because mm -hmm. one of my favorite hoopers, and Janae, on Twitter, all she do is cook men at like 24 hour fitness and it, they be wanting to punch her. Oh, of course. I can tell they want to fight they her. They want to. Just she be pulling. Man. Rattle her ovaries the way she be making them look stupid. She be pulling from so far and she shoots so fast and it be. Man. It's great. I want you to play her. Cash, 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 she, man. If I played her, the video would be an hour long of her <laughs> cooking me. There's nothing I can do to stop her. And listen, I played basketball my whole life. The best basketball player I ever played was a girl named Kendra. When I was in eighth grade, nobody on the boys' team or the girls' team could do nothing with this girl. Yeah, She used to play in my homeboy's Jamal's backyard. This nigga had glasses on, used to cook us. It was just like, nigga, guard her. Nigga, you guard her. I used to play basketball during lunch in high school. <laughs> And I would piss everybody. Me and my best friend, Nina, we would, so we wouldn't go in. We would wait till the ball came out. It yeah. was all one-on-one. -on -one, and they'd be like, <laughs> they would be so mad. I'd be like, you're just going to have to let me shoot because I'm not going to give up this ball and tell. So, you know, I feel like these women, they represent a dream that I didn't have. Oh, but I my gosh. <laughs> when, Angel, when Angel would make, that, would make that shot, though, she'd be like, cash. And speaking of Absolutely. cash, yeah. life doesn't happen bi-weekly, so why should payday? Come on. The money you earn can be in your hands today with Earn In. Earn yes. In is an app that gives you access to pay as you work, up to $100 per day or up to $750 per pay period. Mm -hmm. Just download Earn In app and verify your paycheck, then access up to $100 a day as you work and leave an optional tip. Any money you access plus tips are automatically repaid 
from your next from paycheck. your next paycheck. That's right. Let me tell you what some reasons why you should use earning because listen, life sometimes be happening in a way that we weren't expecting. For instance, your dog gets sick, you got to go to a vet. What you gonna do? Wait until your next pay period? Fluff is dead. Okay. <laughs> what, what, but what happens? What happens if your cousin decides to get married? You weren't scheduling that for your yearly budget, and you like, well, I got to get her a gift, even though the the marriage might not work. Or say you got to go to the ER. You got to pay that bill. You don't want it haunting you. Earning is a way for you to be able to keep your financial goals on the path that you want it to be on while also taking care of life's unexpected circumstances. Make earning a part of your financial routine and join earnings over three and a half million customers who say things like, when I was when I think about earning, I think about financial stability, security, and it gives me a lot of peace of mind. Download Earnin today, spelled E A R N I N, in the Google Play or Apple Store. When you download Earnin app, type in the thing under podcast. Yeah, when you download the Earnin app, type in the thing uh. under podcast when you sign up. Uh, it'll really help the show out. The thing under podcast. So type that in, guys. The thing. <laughs> Earnin yeah. is a financial technology company, not a bank, subject to your available earnings, daily max, pay period max, and location. See earnin.com slash TOS for details. Bank products are issued by Evolve Bank and AMP Trust Member FDIC. Yeah. Ooh. Yeah, that's just the Amper stamp. I don't know why it comes over there like that. All right, once again, big shout out to Don. Uh, also, Sydney Colson said when the Aces come to play, she'll give us tickets. Oh, I know. I already told my niece, Makari. I sent her a picture. I said, you know who this woman is? She was like, yes, I do. She said her name. I said, well, she said, we go to Las Vegas. The Aces are the South Carolina of the WBA for me. This is my team. Yeah. They well, are they black and they are unapologetically black, unapologetically black. Asia Wilson, MVP. I'm going to need you to ask if I could bring my camera. Oh, yeah. like I I got to, to, I, Becky Hammond, I remember watching her in the league. I thought she was going to She, I said that before. She's probably going to be the first woman head coach of an NBA team. She, they play in Vegas, right? Those are the ones. That's what you're talking about. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And her girlfriend was cute as hell. She had she a patty. She was. But they both pretty, though. They're taking, they're taking our women. Listen, yes. <laughs> yes. Because I was like, y'all better bring something else to the table <laughs> than, than money. Because <laughs> I met a girlfriend. I said, girl, you are gorgeous. She was like, oh, thank you. I was like, girl. She could, they came to Dallas, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. So, yeah, I'm taking her up on that offer. Come on, we going. All right. Uh, let's talk about Cowboy Carter, Angel. Texas. <laughs> <laughs> hold on. <laughs> um, I had a blast listening to this album. You know, Beyonce. <sighs> We're number one, right? Uh, I know, I know a bunch of her songs. A bunch of her songs are top charting on the country music album charts, and rightfully so. Um, I'm pulling up the entire album so that I can give you all. I actually did a like a 10 minute video on my thoughts <laughs> on every single song. <laughs> yep. I took notes, copious notes. Um, I think the arrangements um, that Beyonce did with a lot of these songs, American Requiem, which our good friend, friend of the pod, uh, Darius Dixon, mm -hmm. he wrote some lyrics on there, which he's so good. He's so good at writing and stuff that I'm just like, how did that come out your brain? How did he get out of there? So did that man from New Orleans. Uh, what's that man's name who is very on the jazzy side? Come on, somebody. Mm -hmm. Come on, you know uh, John Baptiste. Thank you, John Baptiste. Also, he Detroit Jarrell, friend of the pod, was also featured on Beyonce's album. Yes. Um, yes. Went viral on Twitter. Um, so I'm gonna go quickly. Uh, American Requiem, beautiful. There's like uh, you. I think from that song, you can tell. Oh, we about to enter something that we have not been in a space that we haven't really been in here with Beyonce, with some old to the old Beyonce, the uh, stacks. She knows how to stack better than anybody, in my opinion. Um, Blackbird, you got to hear multiple Blackbird. women. Da, 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 da. First of all, did you know the history behind Blackbird? No. When I found that, I said I already liked the song back when the Beatles did it. But I was like, oh, my God, this is what they were talking Paul about. Paul McCartney said that Beyonce covered it in its true intention. And a white person responded to him and was like, that's not what it means. What It's it just a feel good Stop. song. <laughs> Let me tell you, the songwriter, how it made me feel. It don't matter what I, I wrote Paul it. Paul is telling you he wrote about the little right now to shut up. <laughs> they was like, man, stop bringing race into stuff. He's like, uh, it's called Black Bird. <laughs> oh. <laughs> they were like, mm-mm. 
Um, the the women so that she black women birds. That's what you telling th- me. Th- that's what you telling me. That's what you did, Paul. So black women, it's birds now, huh? Mm-hmm. Um, the women that she pulled from the country music genre and shined a light on uh, in there. It reminded me of Destiny Child. The the harmonies were so sick. Uh, Tanner, who Tanner Adele, uh, who a lot of people talked about, she had the longest solo in there. Her voice was buttery. I'm telling you, you could have put it on some pancakes and yeah. that thing up. Um, 16 <laughs> characters we had all already heard, but then I did, was really listening to the lyrics and I was like, dang, Beyonce, yes. She was kind of giving an ode to her life mm-hmm. of what she's had to go through. Um, Willie Nelson, listen, first of all, he gave me and Josh money. Amen. Tell, tell her the Willie Nelson story. Because that is about the most random thing I've done ever happened on tour God that I've seen you. in my life. I didn't trust it. Oh my God. He I didn't, did. I didn't trust it. I've trusted it and I've been using all the money. Oh yeah. We were up in Detroit sitting in the guest uh, the, sitting in the green room and the people came back there well no Greg told us they were like Willie Nelson is doing this on the road promotion and he's giving people basically $1,500 that was he was given seven hundred fifty dollars in gas cards, which they actually work because I've been filling up my mm-hmm. big old machine truck. Oh yeah, uh, monster truck, I mean. And then uh, seven hundred fifty dollars in cash. I still have to do my post. I'm gonna do a little picture. Hey Willie, mm, for nothing, <laughs> for nothing. You just had to like obviously give them a W nine because of how much money they were giving you. And once they said that, I said, nope, you ain't gonna I- steal my DNA. <laughs> I was all in until they asked the W9. I said, nah, 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 nah. He said, you want to absolutely- take my plasma, do you? I you want to take my, my, yeah, my address? Mm-mm. You can have this W9. I had it already in my phone. I said, Greg, go ahead and send that over to them. Thank you. Hey, if it's still my chromosomes, you, I'm on money- to you, Willie Nelson. Oh, yeah, yeah. Your mm-hmm. money good, too. That money great. I told you, Mario, you don't got to worry about 12 tanks of gas, you know? Just <laughs> chalk it on up. I gave my bread to Joshy. I, I said, can I give to anybody? They was like, yeah. I was like, Josh, take that bread so take they can steal bread. your plasma. Listen. They got a little Joshy Guns clone in Detroit in 15. Yeah, we, had a good dinner. We, we went down to the Mastro's on Friday. We had a good little dinner. Oh, over there. let's see. Look at yes, that. Oh, food tastes better when somebody else pays oh, for it. Oh, what? Willie Nelson steak ain't the same you, as what I paid oh, for no, the no. steak. Absolutely not. I actually bought gas station snacks too. I don't ever do that. I said, I got oh, a 200 Oh, yeah. I got some Lay's chips. Some get, y'all some, get y'all some PGOs. Get y'all, Come on. Get y'all some gummy worms and the like. Shout out to Willie Love Nelson. It. Um, but she brought out Dolly, uh, Dolly P because uh, she redid Jolene. Her Jolene uh, was a little different. Do- Dolly was afraid of Jolene and was like, Come on, man. Beyonce was like, I wish a nigga would, Jolene. Yeah, she said, let me tell you one more time, because I, I called you Becky before, and I love that Dolly brought that up. She was like, you remember you talked about that that little girl Becky with mm-hmm. the hair? She said, Jolene, she's another one with Auburn hair. Yeah. She's a Becky. Um, she had Protector, beautiful. She uh, features one of her children. My Rose is great. Uh, Daughter is a great song if you want to cry. <laughs> spaghetti, uh, <laughs> spaghetti. she's talking her shit. I love Beyonce when she talks her shit. Yeah. I love the, the Angel Reese version of Beyonce. 1000%. Love that. Um, Alligator Tears was cool. Uh, Just for Fun reminds me of my white girl days. And what I mean by white girl days is when I used to listen to the radio that was a pop station. So you would you would get like the NSYNC. You would get some Destiny's Child, but it'd be a lot of white singers. Yeah. That's that's that song. Mm-hmm. That's that and Cheryl Angel- Crow. Uh-huh. I was going to say you really, I, I, I didn't mean to jump ahead. No, go ahead. ahead. Oh no, I was going to say you really love Two Most Wanted. Now, that damn Miley Cyrus, I know some of y'all love her. Sound like a sentient Newport. We need to take her into the ENT because she's got a beach ball in that month. Okay? She, she went through a lot as a child she, star. She, yes, she went through a, 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 a incinerator. Her throat did. <laughs> I don't know why people love that. And I'll be in your front seat. <sighs> Asphalt down the throat. Hot. <laughs> I don't like it. Menthol fresh. I said, where was Carrie? Where was Carrie Underwood? Where was Kelly Clarkson? Where were all these other white chicks that can sing too? Um, but the song is absolutely beautiful. Uh, my favorite is Yaya. Yeah, 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 yeah. That it's one. So good. I, I, I was trying to listen to the whole album. I was walking in D.C., I couldn't finish it in the time I walked because I got to Yaya. I said, I want this one more time. I probably listened to that song about eight times in a row. Oh, she said, fuck it. We shaking. (laughs) (laughs) We swimming. (laughs) It's my jam. River Dance. I know a lot of people thought was going to be my favorite because it's got a good twerk beat to it, but it's actually not in my favorite. Hands to Heaven. Gorgeous. Hands to Heaven is beautiful. Isn't it gorgeous? It's just like Beyonce. What is we doing? Tyrant with Dolly was great. Uh, Sweet Honey Bucket is actually one of my favorites. I know Tony doesn't like it. Sweet Honey Bucket uh, sounds like a place that makes fire fried chicken. I know, and I hope somebody, I hope she opens up a restaurant because I'm going to go eat a chicken. <laughs> uh, I didn't know Shabuzi before then, but I liked him on there. I also liked um, 
Post Malone on Levi's Jeans. His That's voice Austin. was perfect. Yeah, he's a great uh, appropriator of black culture. And then A-Man, uh, <laughs> and then A-Man which uh, re-brings uh, up the ending of American uh, Requiem. Beautiful way to close out the album. So for me, I love the album. There's really only only song that I would go and just play for no reason is Yaya. This is an album that I like to actually just sit on from top to bottom and complete things. Yeah, and I, 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 I listen. Here's what what I love most about this album for Beyonce. Uh huh. Um, she just does what she wants to do. Mm -hmm. It's so great to like. I often think about this. I wish I was alive when Stevie Wonder was releasing his albums, like, and I was like my age now yeah. and could have been like went to the record store. And been like, what's this new Stevie talking about? Yeah. Because the albums are so good. Yeah. I just wish I didn't have, I have uh, had to go back and listen. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. But Beyonce releasing what she wants to, how she wants to, when she wants to, it's been a really interesting thing. Because she's been famous n nearly my whole life. I think I was like maybe 14 or 15 when Destiny Child. 14. Child, 14. Uh -huh. Destiny Child first came out. And when you listen to like that girl group in the mid 90s. Uh -huh. There's no way I could tell. I'm not going to say there's no way Beyonce wouldn't go solo. 1,000% I could see that. But I would have never thought that girl who was a lead singer of that in 30 years, she's going to, 25 years, she's going to release a country oh, country. Album. I never thought country, but I did think she, and this is not to be like, oh, after the fact, I'm saying this. I always thought she was something special from the beginning. No, I did too. I just never thought she would veer out of like R&B music. Uh -huh. yeah, Making no. a country, even a renaissance is like a, kind of like a house it's music It's a album. house. It's definitely not R&B. I wouldn't have thought she, I thought she was, oh, I'm going to be an R&B and I'm going to, you know, I'm going to be an R&B artist. I don't, I can't remember many artists that I've listened to personally that have switched genres As multiple times yeah. in their career. But although... The genre switch is like it doesn't sound like Beyonce. It, she said this is not a country album; it's a Beyonce album. It is. It's a country influenced Beyonce album. Mm -hmm. I, I, not many artists I listen to do that. Well, she just won that Innovator Award from iHeartRadio, and um, see, this is why I be going so hard for Beyonce, and I know y'all get tired of it. I think you can go it. harder for her, honestly. I, I really could, but I have four kids, so I got other stuff to do. However, comma, <laughs> she said something. She motivates me so much on the few times that she does talk. But what for me as a woman in her big four is listening to her, there's there was something beautiful about her just being like, you don't let other people define what you can do, basically. Yeah. And I feel like that's a life lesson for everybody, not I'm just an say. artist of just like, I think we get so accustomed to because this is the way it's always been. This is the way I have to do it. Yeah. Now, as an artist, it's even more so a uh, like a life lesson for me, not just as like someone who's like, I'm about to start rapping, but as a as an actress, as someone in the social media vein of just getting out of my own head of, well, no one's done it this way before. We even look at uh, you, a prime example, uh, Kevin. He did Churchy in a way that most people would not have done it, mm. but. You got churchy done, I did, did, did. and you still got to the goal of what that was, which was to make something pure from your own heart. Absolutely, from my essence. The, <laughs> and if Kevin would have fully, fully just done it the way the path had been already laid, I highly doubt it would have gotten done. One thousand percent. Nor would it be what it is. Yeah. There's a movie idea I have that I'm not even going to say out loud. I just know people would never expect it from me. And I, I want to do it so much because it's something that I want to do versus something that I think people would expect from me. Mm -hmm. That makes sense. Like churchy stuff, that's not a surprise. Correct. That I would do something like this. This other idea that I have that eats at my very soul, you would be like, Kevin's doing that? And I think people would really enjoy it. But I think it would still, it would be like my um, Cowboy Carter. Yeah, I it would feel, be a project that you like, oh, this has kept influence, but I, I wouldn't have thought it was coming from correct. him. Correct. I feel like Churchy is your lemonade. Mm -hmm. You have to do you had to do which or either lemonade or your or self -titled. your self Yeah, your self title. Um you kind of have to get that out. Yeah. A little bit of the, you gotta get you gotta that out get first. It out. And then you get to be like, boom. And this, this is, is also what I like about Beyonce. If you follow her career, 
She came up. She wasn't even cussing in before. I feel like the first time I heard her cuss in an album, I heard her, might not be the first time, was on Self Titled. Uh-huh. Uh, actually, it was the single Sasha before Self Titled. Oh, wait a minute. I, I didn't listen to that full album. Okay. But I remember Self Titled thinking, oh, this is a little different from Beyonce. Mm-hmm. She's, it's not mostly anthems and stuff like that. Uh, and then Lemonade is my favorite Beyonce album. Oh, it's, really? Oh, my God. Because <laughs> I, I, I never expected her to give us that much of her actual life through music. And also, I thought the film was such a great way the to tell that story. The album was so beautiful. And I just, I said, I was in y'all business. And it rhymed. <laughs> Jay-Z did some stuff. Uh-huh. So that to me, and I'm not saying she won't top it. I'm just saying, like, I was, it was such an unexpected approach to music from her mm. because she was coming off the like a and r you know 90s r&b artists they yeah, were like coming off the trained. press they were yeah. based it was kind of based off of how motown was mm-hmm. like that training uh assembly line this is how an artist is training dance music songwriting blah 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 like that was evident yeah but lemonade was like oh okay this is pretty much different ah. i do like it and then once she did that, then uh, Renaissance and Black is King, uh, even the Carters, which I really like. She was rapping, rapping good on that. Oh, yeah, 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 uh, yeah. Four is my favorite album. I was just saying that to Yovana. Four is my fave, fave, favorite. Maybe outside of what was her first album? What was her first solo? Was that four? Dangerously in Love. Dangerously in Love. No, four is my favorite. Yeah. Four is my favorite. So I just love that for her um, and for black women. And that she pisses off country people is just a cherry on top. Because for, for country music to be like, well, she shouldn't be making country. When Shania Twain, a Canadian songstress, dominates country. Keith Urban is, is from Australia. Didn't know that until a month or two ago. Mm-hmm. Never heard that man talk. I've only heard his music. Didn't didn't cross my mind when he was married to Nicole Kidman that they were both from Australia. Mm-hmm. Um and first of all, black folks invented country music. Stop it. Beer, period. So let's stop there. How you gonna take? How you gonna say she can't do something that we created? There, almost every. Don't let me piss make me sure. Off now. I think almost every American-made music genre that is popular was invented by black people. Mm-hmm. Because let's see here: ragtime, j- j- uh, jazz, yep. gospel, country, hip hop. It's just derivative, and blues. derivative. Everything else is a, is a derivative of the version, of the black version of it. Even I would blues even... was the first music, white folks made it, and then it's country, like remade it was like the white version of that is country. And now we black people made country, and white I folks know, just I... took it over. Well, then that's very common in America as well. <laughs> right? No, it was that country when we were doing it. Rock and roll, like don't piss me off. Rock and roll, we also uh, created house music. Ain't no, yeah. Yeah, yeah, house music. Yeah, almost all the popular, uh, and and it, and it makes to me it makes the most sense because of uh, just music in our culture yes. in general. Yes. Um, that was not something that had to be if you if you trace this all the way back to Africa, that was not something that had to be learned in school. It was a part of our daily culture. A thousand percent. So that's how it gets birthed out of us. Ain't no shade. It's Ain't just no what shade. It is. Let bro, just don't rewrite history. Oh, then then you gonna know you. Y'all gonna, gonna do rewrite that. history because y'all, it y'all got the ink in the printer. Just, they but the real it ones know. You hear me? Feel you. All right, y'all. Uh, I'll talk about WrestleMania in the bonus. We got to shoot another podcast. Um, it was a great time though, but I'll go into detail. It was good, moment. right? And uh, you, uh, shout out to me for knowing my sports facts, even Andrew, though Kevin you, doubted you, me every single step of the way. I will continue to do so. Please do so because uh, I will. Because I was really surprised. I won't disappoint you. I won't know some other stuff. <laughs> but today I was prepared. I, said, I didn't. I didn't realize she was at South Carolina for fifteen years. 15 I thought it was years. like ten. I know you told me you said yeah. like eight, ten, and I was like, mm, I'm, I know. also in my defense, not that you were wrong. The five year gap of the pandemic. It'll do it to you. It was it's one year to me. So it always throws my math off mm-hmm. because 2019 to 2024 was one year. Yeah, but it wasn't. So that's yes. when they <laughs> somebody in the WNBA was making this joke. They were like, I'm watching girls who are in the WNBA, I mean who are still in college, and I with play girls who I played with in college, still in college, and I've been in the WNBA for six years. Jesus. That's how the pandemic Long. season. Yeah. Pandemic season plus red shirts and all that type of stuff messed my mind up. But you were right, Angel, and Thank I was you, wrong. Thank you, sir. I appreciate and Josh, it. you were right about J. Cole. So that dog on, yeah, that blip done gave me four years of terrible math. I'd be looking Maybe at that, pictures of man, stuff, and I'd be I, like, ain't no way that was. Josh sent me a picture of me and Melissa doing laundry on the tour. I was like, man, that two years ago was crazy. I looked down the bottom corner, I think it said 2019. I said, what? When? 
Crossroads. When was that 2019 when it was yesterday also as well? I went to my old graduate school showcase to support my mentee. And I looked at the year 2024 and somebody was like, when did you do your showcase? And I was like, almost 20 years ago. I graduated from graduate school the first time almost 20 years ago. Dang. In 2006. Dang. Where did that time go? Kev, we've been working together for almost 10 years. Ah! Ah! You, you came in what, 2018? I came on in 20... Well, podcast stuff. I was or, talking about all deaf stuff. Oh. oh, all deaf for sure. That's over 10 years. No, that it's, was, it's 10 September. Oh, it's 2014. Oh, I see it's 2013. 2019 is when you All right, see. I got to pee. God bless y'all. Keep me seeing the comments. Oh, Bye. 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 Here's another banger for ya. Here's another one. Here's another banger for ya. Here's another one. Here's another banger for ya. Here's another banger for ya. With my boy Kev on stage. And that chick angel.